One of the reasons it is referred to as the scarab vase was it was covered by hand-covered scarabs. Adelaide Robineau, who was from Syracuse, was one of the most celebrated ceramic artists in the world. Her association with the Syracuse Museum of Fine Arts, the predecessor of the Everson, was long and fruitful. In 1913, a year after her death, the museum purchased 50 of her pieces from her estate. Included in those pieces was a scarab vase. The vase separates into three pieces, the top, body, and base. The vase has been exhibited on the second floor gallery with a plexiglass dome surrounding it. Someone had unscrewed the dome and pulled it out from under, from up over the vase, then replaced it with another vase. Several squirrel groups had been touring throughout the day, but it was not until a local antique dealer noticed the switch. Several of the docents museum, at the museum claim it was David Rudd who initially informed the staff. Ron Kutra, the museum's director at the time, the curator, and other members of the museum staff met to discuss what just had occurred. At first they thought it had been moved to another place in the museum, so they searched the entire museum. When this search yielded nothing at 11.30 a.m., they called the Syracuse police. The police interviewed the museum staff and the security guards. The museum did have a security system, but it was not attached to the base. Some of the staff said they saw the scarab base at 7.30 a.m. that morning, while another staff member said they saw it as late as 10.30 a.m. A guard said he saw the different vase on the pedestal at 9, or 8.30 a.m. No one could say where the vase was when, no one could say when the vase was actually, actually taken. On February 13, 1989, the day before, the museum, which is normally closed Mondays, was hosting a private luncheon for its members' council. After contacting the police, the museum's director, Ron Kutra, contacted FBI, other museums, and art galleries in New York City and other parts of the country. During these conversations, Kutra learned that several other art thefts had taken place over the weekend. On, several, on February 11, 1989, the Institute of History and Art in Albany, New York, discovered three of their sculptures were missing. Of the thefts, the scarab, waist, the scarab face was the most recognizable. Everson directed, director said, it's like, what if they stole the Mona Lisa? Who would have the gall to show it? I don't believe there's a dealer or any art collector in the world who would touch it. It's too well known a piece. Everson officials offered a plea to whoever stole the $500,000 ceramic face. Please don't drop it. <laughs> The members of the Syracuse Art Community were stunned by the theft of such a beloved piece. Tom Pichet, a spokesperson at the museum, soon to be senior, senior curator, said the Syracuse developer Michael J. Falcone, a supporter of the museum, had offered a $25,000 reward for the vase. The Everson staff and members had little chance of ever seeing the scarab vase again. Most stolen artwork, as well known as the scarab vase, most likely end up in private collections not to be seen for generations. But luck was on the side of the Everson, or more importantly, luck was not on, not on the side of the thieves. In March, a month after the theft, two Brooklyn, New York men were arrested by federal authorities. George A. Athanastos and Robert Corticelli pleaded to Magistrate Kathleen Roberts. 25 artworks stolen from five states have been recovered. The artwork has been stolen between January 12th and February 25th. 25th, from museums in Boston, Baltimore, Detroit, Columbus, Syracuse, and Albany. The stolen works included antique watch from the, Balt the Baltimore Museum worth $150,000, a $50,000 Tiffany picture from the Detroit Museum of Arts, a Yuan Dynasty blue and gray vase from the 14th century was stolen from the Boston Museum of Arts, a $250,000 Ming Dynasty bowl from the Columbus Museum. A $300,000 worth of stolen art from the Albany Institute of History included a 17th century, I'm not sure about this, Tipshan Tibetan bronze Buddhist lion, lion encrusted with gems, an 18th century porcelain statue called the Four Sons of George III, and an antique, antique watch. Not recovered from the Albany Museum was a pink coral statue named the Queen of Heaven, and finally the scarab face. 
The thieves apparently chose artwork on display that were not connected to alarms. They walked into museums, removed the pieces, then walked out of the museums with the pieces under their coats. How did they know they weren't secured, under security? They were told, I, I don't know. Let me finish my um, presentation and I'll have answer questions. But the thieves miraculously left artwork, but the thieves miraculous theft of artwork paled in comparison to their ineptitude at trying to sell the work. <laughs> the thieves actually went door to door to art dealers trying to sell the work. In some cases, they were disguised in wigs and sunglasses, carrying, among other things, a picture of a small boy carrying the scarab vase. The same picture was included with a number of other things confiscated <laughs> at one of the homes of the ex-wife of the thieves. The little boy pictured holding the vase was his son. Included in the items was a map of one of the museums they had robbed. Also taken were uniforms and fake IDs. One of the antique dealers they actually sold pieces to was also arrested, but he made a deal with prosecutors. The scarab vase was recovered by the FBI agents about a month after it was stolen. It was returned to the Everson Museum of Art with strict instructions that it not be put back on display because it was still evidence in the case. It was looked over by experts to make sure it was not damaged during its journey. The vase was reinstalled in April 1990 to coincide with the 28th Ceramic National. The Ceramic National began in 1930 as a memorial to Adelaide Robineau. The now this part I'm skipping because it used to be down here, and I made a remark that her urn is watching over the vase, but since they moved it, it's not. The thieves were sentenced to two and a half years in prison. After one of the thieves got out of prison, he robbed a Staples and was arrested and sent back to prison. In state Supreme Court document, he said he did not break into the Staples. He entered a room that was marked employees only. In the aftermath of the theft, Senator Tarky Lombardi Jr. gave the museum a grant to update its security system. On February 14, 2009, it was 20 years since the vase. The next year, the vase celebrated its 100th anniversary. And these are some updates to this, because this was done a couple of years ago. Governor Andrew Cuomo's Deputy Secretary for Public Safety, let me see if her name is here. Elizabeth Glazer, uh, what became Deputy Secretary for Public Safety, prosecuted the criminals in the Everson theft. I have another thing from the Art Hostage, which is a blog, talking about the theft, which um, I found some documents on uh, where he, in states, New York State Supreme Court, where he said he did not, shouldn't be prosecuted because he didn't break and enter. He walked through doors, he saw employees. He's gone to jail several times, the last time for stealing $1,200 worth of printers, ink. I do have an article that I don't know if it's the same man where his brother shot his other brother in Brooklyn in a hospital and that he, he killed himself not realizing that he hadn't killed his brother. So I want to let you know that art thieves in general are not Neil Caffrey from White Collar. They are not Pierce Brosnan coming down through the ceiling. They are common criminals who either know somebody or can get a break. Any questions? How did they know it wasn't, there was no security on the things that they stole? I have no idea. There's reference in the, um, the, bullet, the bullet points okay. that there were uh, men walking around. Somebody saw men in tuxedos here taking pictures of the... Um, taking photos of each other. Of the each other before. the day before. So they thought that there the were only problem with that before. is we were closed the day before. The day before... Um, sorry, that's Sunday. Okay, that's Sunday. So what I, they probably did is that they cased the place, but you can't tell any of our stuff, is it? I know. Now that's, I know. 
actually connected. It is secured now. Yeah. It, oh, it is, is secured. Okay. But that other pieces that. were secured at the time, but that piece wasn't. I'm not even sure that there was a, they said that there was a plexiglass dome on it. I don't remember the plexiglass. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing the face on the pedestal, mm -hmm. but not with a plexiglass dome on top. When I've heard that there was no cover on it as well. Yeah. But what they said in the, apparently, and what we've been looking into for years getting the FBI file, is that he took the vase with screwdrivers, the plexiglass dome off. So. How could that not be seen as It was closed. We were closed. And, you know, it is very, you know, at the time, we didn't have to sign in. The docents came in and out. We didn't have to sign in. And I will tell you, if he had, if they hadn't stolen the scarab face, they would have gotten away with the other thefts because all the other um, stuff was uh, not unique. But when you hear Yuan or Ming, that's the time period. It is not referring to the vase. The vase was done during the Ming time. So there are other, all vases done in the Ming period are called Ming. All uh, um, vases do, done during the Yuan period are called Yuan. So there, there's not a thousand of them, but there's only one scarab vase. And that's why he got caught. Because Ron called everybody and the man, you know, walked in with a picture of the little boy and said, I want to sell this. And the guy said, I don't have the money. Come back. And the FBI was there. And he called the FBI. <laughs> Weren't you smart? Rocket science. Uh, I seem to remember many years ago seeing it. Uh, this is odd. But this is one of the things, because every school teacher in the world has told me that they were here that day. <laughs> and they, and I know, we don't get a lot of tours in February. So it is all, they swear, and I don't know where the reporter got this, because it would be interesting to see the FBI report, is they said that they took the dome off and took the vase. Well, where was it without the dome? It was in the Falcon Gallery. Upstairs. That's the first one, right? Or the, it's, I think it's, a, it's, I think it was in the permanent gallery, which at the time was D, I believe. Each of our, um, each of our galleries have letter names, but they also have supporter names. Those change during the years. I believe gallery A is the Falcon Gallery, but normally that is a exhibition area. But I don't know if they were doing a special exhibit, but they were showing our own work in that gallery. Mm -hmm. And all the gallery's two and a half years? Yeah. Isn't that helpful? And he's done it like three or four times in every year he got two years. Because mm -hmm. yeah, I would really think for something like that, he should have gotten 20 years. <laughs> but he didn't break in. Yeah, yeah. That's, right. that's right. So was the other stuff all recovered as well? Yes, except for the uh, the one that you mentioned. Yeah, the statue. Oh. I just want to Can't hear. It's uh, she asked about what the vase was that they put it on. You would probably have to ask David Rudd because I there are conflicting stories and to, as to what was actually there. Oh, there were vases in the vase? Yeah. yeah. From one of the articles I read, it, um, it was a vase that was on display nearby. It was a copper vase. I don't know which one it was specifically. And all the information that I gathered for this um, from newspaper articles. So of course, you know. Yeah, because we have, like, uh, my, Sandra Tropp, who was, I believe, assistant director at that time, called my mother about 4 o'clock in the afternoon because my mother was president of the members council at the time. And she jokingly said, 
okay, who of your group stole? <laughs> no, she's joking. And she just wanted to let my mother know, as president of the Members Council, that it had been stolen and it was coming out in the Herald Journal at the time. So that's how I got into crime. <laughs>